Jim Cramer is interviewing Mark Zuckerberg today at 6 p.m. Eastern on CNBC, and I asked my Twitter followers, what should Jim Cramer ask Mark Zuckerberg? Now, the reason I asked this question is because I'm curious what people want to ask Mark. I have some ideas on what I would ask Mark Zuckerberg as well, but the stock is in the gutter, and when I mean it's in the gutter, I mean it's like in the gutter. We are about to go to the gutter and look at their stock. Boom, right here, Webull, Meta, let's go to them. $158.31. The market kind of rallied uh, over the past couple of days and stocks have been up decently well, about 3 4%. Meta has gone down. Facebook has gone down. If you look at the five-year chart, this was the most interesting thing about Facebook. It is flat for the past five years. So 2017, if you look at here, it's around 149, 150, right here around 2017, 155. You go here, it's at 158. So if you scroll out, if you bought any time after around August uh, 2017, around here, you're down. You're around here, you're down. Blah, 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 blah. Now, yeah, there's some dips in the middle of 2018, 2020, uh, but if you bought up here at the highs of 384, you are down as well. So it is flat for the past five years, which is why it's so incredibly important to time your entry price. Or it's like try to have a decent entry price on these stocks because you know inevitably those businesses could fall sideways or they could go flat. And even if they go really high, they could come right back down. That's just the reality and the harsh nature of the stock market. So we are going to see what Meta is going to be able to do. Now, they are spending $10 billion this year on their VR and augmented reality stuff. The reason the stock market doesn't really like that, and that's probably why they're down to $158, I'm sorry, I spoke very fast there. I know some of you in the comments are like, stop speaking fast. The reason they're down so much is because the market's like, look, we're in a recession. We need you to produce cash flows and profits. Facebook's like, yes, all we do is produce cash flows and profits. We had like $95 billion in net income last last, last year. We had $130 something billion in revenue. We make money. We print money. Investors are like, we want more. Facebook's like, we can only get so many users. We can only get so many people to click on so many ads until we have to innovate and do something else, which is why I'm very sympathetic to Mark Zuckerberg being like, look, we got to do something different. Like, we just have to do something different. There is no way we can last here and just be a collection of blogs and news articles on Facebook, which is really all, all it is, blogs and news articles and, and, and photos. At the end of the day, there are other companies doing other innovative things, and Facebook has to be able to compete with that. Well, the problem is that if you want to compete with that, you got to spend money. Now, Facebook has the money. The problem is investors are like, yeah, why don't you spend that money onto advertising and grow your top line revenue? And Facebook's like, that's not sustainable. I mean, this has been Mark's whole entire case of framing the metaverse. Now, the reason they're so deep into the metaverse is because their argument is like, okay, if we build the metaverse, we have this whole new monetization opportunity with headsets and advertising and VR and all this stuff. And like, that sets us up for the next 10 years. The problem is in a recession, like y you need you need the thing to work, the thing to work. I mean, you're 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 barely able to stay above water. We haven't seen the S&P get to 3,400. If we see that happening, Facebook's not spanning at 150. It's going down a lot lower than that. So at that point, you've got to be able to actually produce the thing that works. And so I think investors are very worried. And you know, Google is focusing on Google Cloud and Google Ads. That's their bread and butter. That's what they're going all in on. They might be innovating in other sectors, but that's what they've got to show to investors every quarter to make it through this recession without getting absolutely destroyed. Facebook took the opposite approach and said, look, we don't really care about that. We want to innovate. And as a result of innovating, uh, we're going to have to spend some money. And investors aren't that happy about that. Let's go and let's see what other people are saying. Jim Cramer interviewing Mark at 6 p.m. Um, what should he ask him? So let's see what people are saying. Without any direction or leadership, how fast should we sell, sell, sell? <laughs> so, so Matt Kent says, uh, look, there's no direction or leadership, so we should sell. Is it true that reptilians are trying to create the matrix? Interesting metaverse question. Ask him if he thinks he can escape real life in the metaverse. This is an interesting question because um, it, it's a little bit of a joke, but the argument is, can the real world actually be replicated in the metaverse? And if it can, and Facebook owns the the infrastructure in order for us to access that quote unquote real world, they make a lot of money. If Apple does it, they make a lot of money. But if if, if the real world is not the metaverse, or doesn't feel like the metaverse, then it's not gonna be real. Another question by Poshak, when is Meta launching permanent VR headset to escape reality altogether? That's the same question as above. Yeah, I mean, this is a real question. If you can really get the the fake world of the metaverse to feel like you're the real world, I don't know what sociological implications that has for society, but like from a business sense, you got a lot of people that are going to try to escape reality in the metaverse. Uh, someone says, oh God, I don't want to know. Uh, he needs to find out more about their consumer smart glasses as that's the mega market for the VR AR industry. The VR goggles will never come close to matching that the market size. So this VR power is a little bit more bearish here of just like what are the goggles actually going to be able to do because Facebook's working on this headset. They just revealed their headset the other day to investors and the stock actually tanked when they showed their headsets. Um, 
they're not they're still in beta they're still trying to work on them look the headsets are going to be clunky that's one thing i'm going to talk about before we get back to the questions um the head google glasses tried five years ago they just like, like a sleek this type of glass and it's very difficult you've got to have something clunky you need to have batteries in it you need to have all this increased like powerful technology into it to get you into that immersive experience it can't be as sleek as my glasses are right now so as a result of that people have to actually like want to be inside of that thing and the question is how are you going to get people to feel incentivized to do that on a daily basis to get value out of the thing that you're building ask him to have someone conduct the interview who actually understands things uh yeah <laughs> and then sean went on to say it should be uh it should be a mitt because uh, i'd like to see a mitt investing do the interview he understands the space can ask real questions and then i said i would ask do you think the senators know you run ads yet senator we run ads <laughs> that was the funniest thing ever and then sean replied what would you say you do here Okay, then he said, Nelson says, what is going on with Sheryl Sandberg? Who's taking over position? She's a legend in developing targeted ads at Google, then at Meta. So yeah, why does she leave at the end of the day? Why did, you know, why would she leave? And I said she wants to be president one day, so that's why probably why she left. About the buybacks, Facebook did buy back their stock at an incredibly elevated price from where it is right now. If they had just waited, they would have gotten a lot more cheaper. So, I mean, that kind of sucks that they bought it back so early. So that's one question. Kramer finally got Zuck to interview, pretty impressive. Will you ever monetize WhatsApp? What differentiates your version of the metaverse for your competitors? How do you plan on fending off TikTok? What is your long-term outlook on India's growth opportunity since TikTok is banned there? YouTube should be more scared of TikTok than Facebook and IG. Okay, so I think that's the question I'm gonna end it off there and that's where I wanna talk about Facebook and TikTok. That's the last thing that I'm gonna talk about today. So let's talk about TikTok. The metaverse stuff is important. I think we, there's a lot of questions about VR, metaverse, how you plan to scale, how you plan to own the, the IP, the infrastructure, the hardware, the software, the app store that people build on top of. They've got to own that if this $10 billion bet is gonna be successful. If they're not owning that, I'm not that bullish on their metaverse bet. I'm already not bullish on the metaverse because I'm like, I don't think people are gonna spend time in it every day, uh, especially because I can do a lot of real life things with my phone, right? There's the use case where my phone in the real world. No matter if I'm at a concert, I'm on the subway, I'm, I'm biking, whatever, maybe. Um, probably wouldn't be when I'm biking, but like I have my AirPods on, right? So I'm listening to something. But so, but in the metaverse, the headset doesn't have that many real world applications. Meaning, I'm not going to be in 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 a restaurant with my with my with my headset on. I'll have my phone open, and therefore the phone is useful. There's valuable. There's applications I can access from the phone, but I won't have my headset on. So they want the headset to be the thing that ultimately creates the next generation of computing and replace the phone as the infrastructure, which is Zuck's goal to get you know rid of the Apple iPhone is like the main way we access content and information. Well, then it has to have a use case in a lot of different scenarios, and I just don't imagine the world wearing this headset in a lot of different scenarios. I, I just don't see that happening. So as a result of that, those questions are incredibly important. The second thing that's important is Facebook and TikTok, right? Like TikTok's, uh, I think CEO or CMO came out the other day and they said, look, what Google Plus did to Facebook in 2011 is exactly, is exactly what they're trying to do to us in 2022. What did Google Plus do in Facebook in 2011? So I remember I was old enough to see what was happening. I was on Facebook. Facebook created a massive social graph. If you joined, your friends joined, your friends, friends, friends joined. You just had the entire world using this thing. So your, your graph, your feed of connected content that you saw was from your friends and family, people that you cared about. Google Plus tried to replicate that and create Google Plus as a social network. They failed. They utterly failed. Why did they fail? Because they couldn't replicate the social graph. It was just that simple. If you can't replicate the social graph, you're ultimately going to fail. So they failed at that. Now, TikTok is saying that we've created an entertainment platform where our algorithm is not based on a social graph. It's based upon just giving you interesting content that you want to see. That algorithm is fundamentally unique. It is differentiated from what Facebook has created. But Facebook is trying to do with Reels on Facebook and Instagram what TikTok is doing on TikTok. And the problem is that that person who had that quote from TikTok, they said they're going to be like Google Plus in 2011 because they cannot replicate the algorithmic curation model that we have created on our platform. And as a result of them not being able to actually do that, we win, right? That's their argument. Their argument is we win. We win in this space. And Facebook at the end of the day is like now the old big giant trying to catch up with us just like Google Plus was with Facebook because their business models are different. One is a social graph based on friends and you're trying to show random people's content in the feed that doesn't work on Instagram or Facebook. That's not what Facebook and Instagram are for. The other one is a pure play entertainment platform. It's like when Facebook tried to do Facebook Watch to compete with YouTube. It's like YouTube is a place to consume video. Facebook is not. So as a result of that, when you kind of integrate video, it's just not that interesting to, to, to consume it on Facebook at the end of the day um, versus the type of discovery and, and, and curation you get on YouTube. So TikTok is saying, hey, we're going to get users away from Facebook and Instagram because they have a different use case for Facebook and Instagram. That doesn't mean people are going to stop using those products, but that does mean that TikTok is going to be um, incredibly attractive for people to use. 
I want to ask Zuck about this. I mean, I really want to ask him what is he going to do to get the world's attention to, again, be centralized on Instagram and Facebook and not go away to the mainstream TikTok platforms uh, or to the platforms like TikTok that do algorithmic curation of content that is not based on a social graph. That's my biggest question at the end of the day. And if he can answer that question, um, I think, you know, we will see at the end of the day what Facebook can really do and what they're made of. But I think that's the biggest thing for me. That, that even more than the metaverse stuff, if that 3.6 billion users starts to go away and chip away because of TikTok, it'll be rough. Now, I don't think it's going to go away because they have WhatsApp. And I mean, billions of people around the world use Facebook as a product. It's incredibly important, incredibly valuable. But nonetheless, if TikTok starts adding, I saw TikTok add photos the other day, if they start stealing a little bit of ground, then it's a little bit harder to imagine uh, Facebook surviving that. Uh, and Facebook like competing with them in a meaningful way, especially because we saw what happened with Google+. Plus. So those are my thoughts. Leave a comment below. What question would you ask Mark Zuckerberg if you were interviewing him? And what question do you think would be the most important question uh, to actually deal with him? Thank you guys so much for listening. I appreciate you. I will check you out all in the comments and I'll see you in the next one.